One of the key use cases that Azure Data Factory's mapping data flows open up to you is the ability to bring together disparate data on your data lake, from databases, from files, and to be able to combine those into federated or combined data sets that you can look at from one single view within the Azure Data Factory UI. From the web page, you can uh, explore your data, you can examine it, you can transform it. What I'm going to show you today is just a real quick, quick example of being able to bring together disparate data sources into a, an exploratory uh, format and then to be able to uh, modify that data uh, very easily without writing any code. And so in my case, I'm using the movies database, which is what I almost always use for these demos. And it's about 9,000 or 9,100 rows of uh, movies and ratings uh, throughout this, uh, throughout the 20th and 21st centuries. And actually, I'm not even sure if it goes into the 21st century, but it's within that time period. Anyway, I have three different versions of it. I have a version that's a text file CSV, and I'll show you the data set for that. So the data set here points to the uh, common delimited data sets. That's a CSV, comma separated values. Then I have a version that's on my Azure SQL database called Movie Stage 2. So I had staged some data through my other demos. I'm just connecting to it here. And the third is also on my data lake, and this is a Parquet version, which has some other attributes to it that I don't really even want within my analysis. But you can see that I can federate these together into a single view. And I do that by joining. So the join within Data Factory's data flow does not, it does not care where the data is coming from. In fact, you can join from any portion of your data flow any left to any right. And so in this case, I have my left side of the CSV, my right side is the database, and I'm joining on my key, which is the movie. And then I do another join right after that, and bringing in now my parquet data. So it, it's completely relevant as to <clears throat> uh, what type of source it is, as long as I have something I can join on, or otherwise I'll do a cross join against these. But I have fields that I can join on, and you can see that uh, this happens a lot when you're working within um, different data sources, and especially within Lake um, data sets is that there is a key column that I can join on, but notice how the um, on the left hand side, which is the data coming in from the previous join, movie is a text, is a string, not an integer. Whereas on the right hand side, coming from my, par my parquet file, I have it defined in that data set as a, an integer. So I can inline with an expression without needing to create a new column, I can just create a, um, an expression that says two integer and I can cast it right there. The casting will only be um, relevant for that action, for that one transformation. Okay, so now what I do after this is I'm going to do a select. So a select is a very key thing to do within a federated data set because you're gonna have uh, many different attributes that you may not want, so you wanna do some pruning. So I do some uh, field pruning here with my select. I also do some, uh, uh, um, I, I do some naming toward more of a canonical model. So I'm taking some obfuscated names. I'm taking names from different, um, my different joins, sides, and I'm creating single uh, model names for those. Now I have a single model that I can view. And actually, right from here, I can go ahead and do a data preview and take a look at this data. And you also notice that I have some duplicate rows now that I've joined these. In fact, I should point out that on my secondary join, I did a lift outer. So I'm bringing everything from my first join together um, with my right join on the parquet file. But so you're going to end up with, with things like some, a little bit of a messy uh, situation where you do some select so you can pick out the uh, columns that you want. And then I'm going to do an aggregate after this. The aggregate will be able to perform an aggregation across those um, different rows and across the different data sets from a single federated view. So notice only once I've done these joins, everything flows through a stream of data into just that one input for the aggregate. So what's cool about this is now I can do things like I can have a group by across that movie ID. So this will take out all the duplicates. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to aggregate um, all of these rows into a single view so that I can look at um, all of the different um, ratings per year, which is my goal when I'm trying to do here. So what I'm doing is using the um, ability to do column uh, pattern matching within my aggregate. And so I'm saying that for every column that comes in, I want to take every one of those columns. So it's just the, the uh, matching uh, condition is true. So every column, everything that matches is going to be represented by dollar dollar, and then the value for every column is just going to be the value coming in from that column. Now I'm um, choosing the first occurrence of every column 
and I'm just going to convert it to a string, value to a string. Now, because I am grouping here, this is going to also take out all my duplicate rows. So I'm doing some data cleansing here as well while I'm at it. So let's go ahead and look at what this looks like on my data preview. And you can see the duplicates are gone. And I have um, all of my columns look nice. I have the columns that I'm interested in. So I think I'm ready to go ahead and do some analysis on this. Now, one thing that I noticed is that because I changed everything to a string in order to do some um, manipulation of the columns, I don't want that. I want to put this back into an integer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and refresh this because I had made some changes. So you click refresh on here. And I'm going to be able to use the feature of quick actions within data flows. And in this way, I can quickly change um, I can quickly change the data types of my columns. I can do some quick transformations. I can also do some column pruning right here without needing, uh, without needing to do that manually. I can just point to the column and I can do that here. So I'm going to change my year to an integer. I'm going to click on typecast. I'm going to say integer. Next, what I'm going to do is I saw that rating, of course, everything is a string. So I want to change my rating back to an integer as well. So I'll click on rating and typecast that to an integer. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some additional um, fields that I really don't need for my analysis and my exploration here. So once this comes back, I'll take out a few of those. So I've got some of this, some uh, things over. I'll just take out a couple of these. Let's take out this. Um, I'm not going to do Rotten Tomato um, analysis. I'm just going to use the rating column. So we'll take that out. And what else should I take? Let's take out these. I'll take out the action dupe and the movie ID dupe. This came from the parquet data set. I'm not really using that. So we'll take those out. That's good enough for now. So let's go ahead and confirm. Now, when you confirm, what Data Factor is going to do is going to create the transformations for you. So you write no code to do all those transformations. So there is my. Uh, typecasting and my um, column pruning is done through the select transformation for me. Great, so I should be able to get a good analysis of this now that I can uh, play around with. So let's go ahead and uh, refresh this. Let's explore our data from our federated data sets. Okay, so there we have um, the year. So let's go ahead and take a look at the statistics on the year. Um, these other columns so the columns for the ID, uh, this would probably be a duplicate I want to remove as well and maybe change those to integers as well, but I think for the demo, that's probably good enough. So within the year, um, there are, uh, at least out of this set, so one thing you, you'd want to do here, I should have done this earlier, but I will show you. Um, I did already change this um, previously before the demo, but you can change the number of rows that come into your preview by going to debug settings and you can for each source you can set the limit of the number of rows. So I have 10,000 that should be good enough actually for this demo so I'm going to leave that as such. But you can see the values of the 25th percentile, 50th, 75th, you can see the average year, the variance amongst the values in there as well. Let's go over to the rating column, let's take a look at the stats on that. Click on the statistics button and we'll see the uh, distribution of values within the rating field. And so we see that amongst the ratings, that uh, the highest occurrence is 1, which would be low, and then 10 would be high. So you can see how these movies all fall within that. Now, I'd like to be able to see these sorted by year. So the way I'm going to sort is I'm going to just go ahead and add a sort to my data flow. So I'll click on the plus button at, the, at that transformation that I'm on, which is the remove columns. And I will add a sort transformation. And the sorting is going to be by year. And we'll leave the ordering as that. Let's go ahead and take a look at our data now. All right, now we have our data sorted by year. So um, hopefully this just gives you some sense of how you can bring together disparate data into federated data and view it and explore it and analyze it here within the browser UI for Data Factory with Mapping Data Flow. Notice I did not sync any of this data. I didn't move it. I um, don't load it into anything. I'm just here in the debug uh, mode, debug session within Azure Data Factory's Data Flow. Hope you enjoyed it.